Welcome back to Short Shifts. I'm Ben Burnett. Joining me as always, my host, Louis Ezekiel. Louis, my friend, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing all right. You know, enduring the ups and downs of fantasy play. This is the first night I've had to bench a player. Uh, and I benched a player who scored, so I'm I'm a little nervous about that, but I'm feeling okay overall. How about yourself? Well, I I withheld our new catchphrase, our new slogan at the beginning of the show, the only fantasy hockey podcast hosted by two guys who are winning their tier one cupful playoff matchup. And the reason I did that is because your matchup is super tight all of a sudden, and I didn't really want to get into jinxes or, or anything like that. I don't know how you feel about jinxes, but I just didn't want to make you feel uncomfortable by potentially jinxing you. Oh, I'm okay. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that any randomness uh is already baked in. I don't think that the universe uh necessarily is listening in and has it out for me. All right. Well, maybe that's why you're losing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are by 1.5 points. Yeah, Come on now. It, I know. It, you're very it's a it is anyone's matchup to be honest with you. You're going up against Mark from the Stat Attack podcast. A uh, very tight matchup. Um, we are, of course, coming to bring you the news and headlines from around the league. And today we have a ton of news, mainly a ton of injury news. So we have a lot to get to. We'll start in Vancouver. Not necessarily injury, but how could we not talk about the Canucks and what's going on in Vancouver? Um, the Canucks have been off the ice for about two weeks. And then I believe it was last night, Lewis, we are recording this on Thursday, Wednesday night. JT Miller is quoted uh, by multiple press members as saying essentially the league is ignoring the uh, Canucks health. He has a lot of concerns about the schedule. The Canucks were scheduled to play 19 games in their last 31, despite the fact that, and he didn't say this, but I mean, despite the fact that they are out of the playoff picture right now, yes, they could go on a run, but from everything he sounded like, you know, COVID appears to be uh, affecting the locker room in a serious way. Conditioning is a problem. And from what he said, they basically have one practice and one pregame skate to get, come off of a two-week break and jump right back into the playoff, the home stretch here before the playoffs. So, Lewis, we now know that the Canucks have had two games pushed back this weekend. They will not have a game during the playoffs. Many people probably carried Brock Besser into the week, for example. JT Miller, I know I have on a few leagues hoping, praying that they would get two games this weekend. It is not about us. I am happy to, you know, to take the hit on this if it means better things for the Canucks health long term. But what are we doing here as from a fantasy perspective? That's what we're here to talk about. Um, not the most important thing happening, but it is what we are qualified to discuss. So I got to ask, what are you thinking about these Canucks? I mean, I think this is a really tough situation. It's so unfortunate. You know, we have seen, you know, obviously these shutdowns and postponements, but I think to have it happen at this stage of the season, you know, raises more questions. And I think that's what JT Miller was sort of getting at is, you know, what is the purpose of kind of going out there? Like you said, left unsaid that the Canucks are very much on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. It seems like morale is quite low. You know, I guess from a fantasy standpoint, um, you know, we've been hearing about, you know, the, the flyers sort of look like their heads aren't in the game so much. And we have some concerns maybe about, you know, their level of focus and desire. From the way Miller makes it sound, I would be extremely concerned about that sort of approach, you know, feeling like they are being shoehorned in to play these games that really a lot of them are not super important. So we saw at the end of the. Uh, 2020 season when the remainder of the season was scrapped that they went with a points percentage to determine seating. Um, and, you know, I don't necessarily see why we couldn't take that approach if things are as bad as it seems in Vancouver. Um, you know, I, yes, it might put some teams at a slight disadvantage, but what do we want to show that we actually care about as a league and as fans of a league I, I I don't know. It's 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 very difficult in terms of fantasy. Um, you know the the teams this is roughest for obviously Vancouver. Um, but then they had a lot of games. The their remaining games were scheduled against Toronto, Calgary, and Ottawa. Um, so on the one hand, you know you might think, well, uh, I'd love to stack teams that are going to play against the Canucks. Obviously, mm -hmm. this is you know, <laughs> it's it's a 
cold, calculated measure that doesn't have a whole lot of empathy to it. But if we're trying to win fantasy, stack those teams against Vancouver, if in fact they do get to play against each other, Mm -hmm. um, because it could be a great opportunity to pile up some goals. Um, you know, or the danger there is it's a gamble because if those games end up being canceled, uh, then you're going to find yourself in a position where, you know, instead of getting a pile of goals that you hope for, you may be getting nothing at all. In terms of players that I would want on the Canucks, if they do resume play, I think it's limited pretty much to, I don't know, Brock Besser, uh, EP40, and maybe uh, JT Miller. Although, like we said, I, I have a little bit of concern about the... Uh, level of drive for a player who is you know saying not i'm not chiding him for saying the wrong thing certainly no, here, no. right you know uh but you know he is seems to be expressing that he's not especially interested or excited about the prospect of of being pushed out there by the nhl and i think that could you know that's going to be that's going to have an effect on your drive on your mindset um i would not want thatcher demko uh the other kind of big name quinn hughes um uh, was symptomatic uh, and possibly receiving fluids, I think, from reports. So I don't think I would be anxious to jump on him. I heard he lost Uh, some weight and basically he was the one who dealt with the most severe symptoms. Yeah. So, you know, I think that you should be very cautious um, dealing with with any Vancouver players. And if you have the opportunity to stream in someone else, I think now is the time to start looking. Uh, If you've got some leftover moves at your end of your week here uh, or if you're in a bye week, you know, that could give you that opportunity to uh, to move some of these players out. All right. So by that same token, a couple other uh, folks that we should talk about here, some big name players uh, who are going to be out for extended period. Uh, It was announced that Jack Eichel uh, would miss the remainder of the year, something that a lot of people had suspected. Um, It sounds like a back neck nerve issue, um, which I think helps explain uh, some of the challenges he had while still trying to tough his way through it and play uh, during the first half of the season. Really outside of those first couple weeks, it was not the Jack Eichel that we were used to seeing. Uh, And then Steven Stamkos um, just recently announced uh, that he will be on long term injured reserve retroactive to April 8th. Uh, That means he would not be eligible to play until um may 1st but their game is may 2nd and that would be the earliest i believe that is a sunday which would be the last day of yahoo playoffs um you know i think that you know maybe with that we could be hopeful for a playoff return but uh he should miss the majority of your fantasy playoffs if not all of it you know except maybe that last night but i don't know why uh Tampa Bay would risk his health that late in the season um when there is likely not a whole lot to gain yeah, I heard that he um, he broke his fingers counting up uh, the pennies that are available to Tampa Bay and their caps, their salary cap situation. Well, of course, with him being moved to long term injured reserve, that does free up eight and a half million dollars of cap. Um, but obviously, that's not a huge benefit with the trade deadline already having. I was passed. just going to say, I'm sure that they're going to find some sort of way that they can go out and add a superstar for free. Some the, the the level of cap circumvention in Tampa Bay is astounding. Shouts out to that front office because they are they're basically doing the Bill Belichick thing of like you know f- looking for every possible loophole. Anyway, uh, yeah, Steven Stamkos almost out for the entire Yahoo season. If you need, if you're in a one year league, I would almost for sure be dropping him. Um, if you're in a keeper, though, probably you have to hold on. Yeah, I mean, unless your your injured reserve is overflowing, like I am in a league where I have Kucherov, Eichel, and Grubauer right now. We'll talk about Gruby in just a little bit here, but um, yeah, it's gonna be time to make some very tough choices. But you gotta, you know, go for the win. You only you only can win one time each year. Worry about what comes next uh, later on. And so you mentioned. Jack Eichel, um, potentially, well, definitely out for the year. It seemed like there was a, there have been conflicting reports. He's getting surgery. No, he's not getting surgery. He's getting it. And now I think the most recent one I read said that he is not getting surgery, uh, going to try and recuperate without the surgery. That scares me quite a bit that, you know, in three months it could be, oh, he's not progressing enough. And he's decided now he will get the surgery. And then it he's into next season. We have a Tyler Sagan situation. Um, but overall, I mean, given the information that we have now about Jack Eichel, do you consider him, you know, still a top 10 guy going into next year? He was drafted sixth overall in most spots this year. Has he lost that status for you? So the thing that makes me nervous and, you know, he 
he was an outstanding second round pick for me last mm. year. You know, and and so if he, I, I think there are going to be people who are scared off by him, and so he may be a value pick next year. I do think a lot of the excitement about Eichel that had him in that sixth place spot was the idea of him playing with Taylor Hall, and that maybe they could make something there. Obviously, we know that like all things that are supposed to be good in Buffalo, uh, that hasn't turned out exactly the way that we hoped. Uh, I, I would see he's, he, to me, I think next year he's going to be like a, like a round one, round two kind of tweener sort of see where he falls. Maybe he's a great person to take at the turn. If he goes that far, I just, I worry that, like you said, you know, this, this decision to forego surgery for the time being and try to recuperate what happens if it gets re aggravated. You could be looking at even a, a potentially, like you said, a, a Sagan issue or even a Kucherov issue. Um, you know, where you've got a high pick who just is going to do nothing for you for the year. And I, that makes me quite nervous. Yeah. And I think that if we're going into next year and it feels like we might be in a Pasternak or a Marchand situation like we were in this year or, you know, a, a worst case Sagan or uh, or Tarasenko situation, we'll know a lot closer. We just don't. It's way too early to say. I would say like off top, if it looks like he's healthy going into the season, I'm probably happy to take him. Yeah, like eight or nine. I think I'd take Stamkos ahead of him, whereas I would have had those flipped last year. But I I don't think that, you know, Jack Eichel didn't get picked sixth overall this year just because of Taylor Hall, right? Like he had a 94 point season. He, He deserved that hype on his own. And so... I'm uh I'm not ready to to write him off if he if if we have reason to think that he's back healthy next year. Lewis, we need to take a quick break. You're listening to Short Shifts. Welcome back to Short Shifts. Lewis, we have so much to talk about. Um one more headline before we get into the injury section in Florida. We have a we have data on Nikita Gusev on his new team, his first game with Florida tonight. And he is playing not just on the top line with Sasha Barkov and Mason Marchment. He's also playing top power play with all the studs on the Panthers. Um, And so I I think at this point, you kind of have to say Gusev's a speculative ad, no? At at, at least. Yeah, I, I think this is a lottery ticket that is worth uh, worth grabbing onto. I do wonder, um, you know, it would be nice if he was on that first line with Barkov and Verhage, since Verhage's had so much success. But uh, does that threaten his power play spot, um, you know, uh, if and when Verhage returns? So just something to think about there. But yeah, I mean, you love somebody who can line up alongside Barkov, uh, somebody who is out on such an elite power play. Yeah, I think this is a guy I like to pick up. He, he has shown that he is... He, you know, he, maybe he is not, uh, uh, a, a Panarin type, uh, coming over from the KHL with a lot of fanfare to really make that smooth adjustment to the NHL and be as successful. But he certainly is not the player who was getting healthy scratched in New Jersey. Like he has more to offer, uh, than what he was able to, to show as a devil. I hope so. I think what we learned this season uh, from Nikita Gustav is he's not a two-way specialist. And so putting him in a position to succeed offensively could, I, I think that they're, I think to your point, there's still upside there. Uh, I talk about this a fair amount, but basically when it comes to thinking about players I might want to add in fantasy, I think about two things. I think about skill and I think about opportunity. And with Nikita Gusev, you can see the opportunity here, right? Um, does he have the skill to cash in? Can he be what he looked like he was in the second half of last year? Or could he be, you know, what Evgeny Dodonov was in Florida? It is early to say, and uh, so far, no points tonight, but I am hopeful and I've got him in a few spots and I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing what it is. There is one more topic that we need to talk about in Florida though. And, um, it's the goaltending, uh, Chris Dreger gets the first the first two starts in a row that I can recall him getting since, you know, the early parts of the season, all of a sudden it looks like we may have more of a 1A, 1B after I think, I know we've been through this song and dance before, but does Dreger have a legitimate call for this net or or do you think that we're just in a tandem? So it was obviously a rough start from Bobrovsky that sort of has led to these couple Dreger games in a row. Uh, seems like things are going well tonight against a somewhat shorthanded uh, Tampa Bay squad. But yeah, I think, um, you know, I don't see why, at least for the regular season, you don't, um, you know, split this up and let maybe the hot hand uh, keep it going like we saw 
uh, for these last two games. I believe the last nine games had been back and forth, back and forth between Bobrovsky and Dreger. So it is interesting to see uh, that little change come up. As you said, we've kind of talked this one to death and we may end up uh, at least for the regular season, you know, basically right around that 50, 50 spot without necessarily a significant advantage going to one player or the other. Um, I would imagine that they would hope to have Bobrovsky with his confidence back and ready to go for the playoffs. I think usually we want to lean on the veteran come playoffs time. Um, but, you know, very much remains to be seen. We've seen that Dreger can really turn it up and have an extremely hot hand uh, in, in short bursts here. So uh, we and, could and see him going to run. That point, Lewis, that they are heading into a playoff stretch where Dreger actually doesn't have a contract for next year. So I think in most people's minds, like he he was a possible trade ship at the deadline. And then they, they see what they have in Spencer Knight. Spencer Knight moving up on the taxi squad over the weekend, I believe, as well. Um, and so I, I think that they might be tipping their hand that they want to see what they have in Drager before deciding to move on from him, presumably in the offseason. So I don't know. Why wouldn't they be giving him a chance? I think at the very least, you know, we're looking ahead to next week. Florida has a back-to-back to start the week. You have to assume both Bob and Drager probably get starts unless Knight somehow mixes in there. And then they have a game on Thursday and Saturday. I would guess that you know, both of them play, both Bob and Drieger pr- play two games next week. You mentioned Philip Grubauer earlier on the COVID list now. So we have a tandem situation in Colorado. You're going to see why what I'm doing here. I'm bringing, I'm going to bring this full circle. You and I have Mike Smith on a, on a team in the FHT Invitational League. And the Oilers play one game this week, only two games next week. I have been advocating for Chris Drieger, who I think, you know, two games from Florida, but I want to know you, you've been advocating for maybe going after one of these Colorado avalanche goaltenders, Jonas Johansson or Devin Dubnik. What's with all the alliteration in Colorado? I have to ask, but Lewis, I I guess, where is your head in Colorado? Which of those two would you prefer? We saw a lot of fab going towards Devin Dubnik in the cupful last night. So I will say in this FHT league, there is a high premium on wins. A win is worth the same as 16 saves. Uh, And so that is one of the reasons why it's pushing my thinking is because I feel like Colorado can win easily, you know, should be expected to win the majority of games that they play. Um, So, you know, uh, Johansson is the one who is available in that league. And I'm looking at Johansson and Dubnik. Uh, You know, I was leaning towards Johansson because of three good starts, but... I am trying to, you know, engage my coach brain here. Dubnik was brought in to be a veteran presence in goal. And I really have, have, fe- I'm feeling more and more like he is more likely, to, uh, Dubnik is more likely to end up with 60% of the starts than 40. Um, you know, you were ribbing me a little bit because you brought up that, uh, our, uh, beat writer from Buffalo who talked about Johansson being the worst goalie he has ever seen, mm. um, which was, you know, h- high comedy, uh, really as you read through kind of what they were talking about. But uh, it has, it has not scaring me off Johansson just because of, um, you know, the, the stats, because, you know, I thought that Dubnik's, uh, last game out was pretty uninspiring. Uh, allowing three goals to the fairly hapless Blues. But Johansson's good games were against Anaheim, so I don't think there's really any uh, you know level of competition discussion to be had there. Mm. Um, both are negative in goals, saves above average per 60. Johansson is letting in 0.6 more goals than an average goalie would per 60 minutes. Uh, Dubnik is doing a little better at just negative 0.43 goals saved above average per 60. Both pretty grim looking. Um, so, you know, I, I don't love either of them, especially for rates. I do think they could be uh, effective for wins, but I'm, I'm starting to think that Dubnik uh, is going to get more starts here uh, and that maybe Dreger is the better short-term uh, plan just because of number of starts that he would gather. I think you're overthinking it, Lewis. I think that the main thing with Colorado is the team is good. The goalies are bad. We don't know if they're going to be able to win games with like if they win on a three game losing skid here and all of a sudden, you know, they're desperate to get Grubauer back because they need a little bit of I mean, we saw what happened to them in the playoffs last year. They they need a little bit of stability. 
I would, I would, that wouldn't shock me at all. So I, I'm, t- I'm too nervous to go in on either of these avalanche goalies. I do not understand why people are jumping in headfirst. I guess if you're super desperate for a, a goalie, then you could do worse if you're, if you're in a wins categories league. But yeah, I, I have no interest in it, either of them because I think it's basically just going to be whoever wins most recently gets, gets to keep the net. One more stop on the tour around the league. Let's chat about Dallas. Ben Bishop and Alex Radulov done for the season. What do you think, Lewis? Is this Anton Hudobin's net from here on out? Yeah, I like Hudobin to have the majority of the starts from here on out. I think, you know, we saw the best of Ettinger a little earlier in the season where he was kind of pushing. Um, but again, thinking like a coach, I want someone with a little more experience who's really um, been able to show long stretches of consistency. He had just an outstanding toe save the other night. Uh, mm-hmm. Check out the the replay or the gif if you get a chance. It's really good. Um, but yeah, I think he can hold off Ettinger. Obviously, losing Radulov is not great, but bringing in uh, Jason Robinson and giving him tons of playing time at 21 uh, has worked out very well for them. So uh, hopefully he can uh, sort of fill in for the missing offense from Radulov. And, uh, you know, I still kind of like uh, uh, Kudobin here. Uh, I think he makes for a pretty interesting option uh, for the remainder of the season, for sure. I do want to congratulate you on shoehorning Robertson talk in before we got to the end of the show. I, I, I am impressed with your resolve. Always an important task to uh, to get a little bit of cheat code J-Rob in there. There you go. Lewis, I think we've talked about enough hockey for this week. I think this is our longest runtime shows back-to-back of the season, at least when it's the two of us in the studio. I know I went a little long with uh, Jesse. I think you did the same with Elon. Anyway, Lewis, my friend, thank you so much. And uh, I guess this is it until we find out who is moving on to the Cupful Final Four. And I just want to wish you the best of luck. And to you as well, my friend. May... All of your ups and downs be related to play on the ice and not related to, you know, exterior incidental nonsense. That's Ooh. that's my big hope for everyone this fantasy season is, you know, however your season turns out, it turns out because of the managers making their moves and not from, you know, uh, outside, outside extra stuff. So uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate you diehards who are still hanging in there and downloading each episode here at the end of the season. Uh, the payoff uh, will will be there for you, whether it's this season or next. Um, be sure to give us a follow at Short Shifts KK, as well as Brian and Elon at Keeping Carlson, Dave Benton of the Stream Scheme at NHL Stream Scheme. And please visit and utilize the great sites we research our episodes with at Yahoo, Frozen Tools, Natural Stat Trick, and Cuckupful.com. Our intro and outro music was created by Pat Roach. And until we see you next time, play smart and keep your shifts short. 